So this is a movie review for Christians about the hostiles. Uh, it's starring Christian Bale. It's a basically it's a kind of an old western movie, kind of a cowboys and Indians, but they're not like cowboys. It's more like the cavalry versus Indians. And this is uh, kind of post. It's sort of the end of the uh, era of the Indians fighting in the West, out in the plains, and and all that happened there with the Comanches and various other tribes. And so uh, the movie begins with Christian Bale, who plays a part of a cavalry officer, middle-level officer. Giving, uh, being given the command to escort uh, an Indian chief who was in prison there at their ca at their cavalry base to escort him to another uh, location or back to his actually back to his uh, to his tribe. But Christian Bale, who does a good job by the way, he, he doesn't want to. Uh, He's not too eager to help out the Indians. He's he's seen his friends and fellow soldiers slaughtered by some of these Indians, including the chief, who is now being ordered to escort back out of prison to his homeland. So at first he he uh, he re he refuses his his superior officer, and superior officer threatens him with dishonorable discharge and losing losing his pension and he only has a little more time to do it before he's retired. But it, you can see that it really bothers him to have to do this. He, he doesn't like those Indians one bit whatsoever. And he even can, considers committing suicide instead of doing, doing it. But the next day he wakes up and decides to Go ahead and do it, but he seems uh, he may have a he may have concocted a an agenda. Anyway, him and uh, several other soldiers head on out with the Indian, the chief and his wife, and and one other Indian, and I think one child Indian, one of their uh, one of the uh, Indian children, and. Uh, and on the first day after on the trail, he Christian Bale hands the uh, hands a ha uh, hatchet to the uh, Indian chief and dares him to take a swing at him. And the Indian chief is getting pretty old by this time. That's why they're letting him go. Uh, he refuses to take the bait. And uh, they put they put chains on his ar on his arms and and continue to travel. And then the second or third day, or you know, as they're going, they come upon a uh, an old homestead that had just been burned down. They see a body down there. Christian Bale goes down there alone. And finds uh a woman still alive holding a, a baby in her arms but the baby's dead and everybody else is dead there they all been slaughtered by a Comanche tribe they uh, take the women back to her woman back to her camp and she becomes she becomes a character in the story as they continue their journey and then uh, they know the Indians are around and they're probably going to attack them as they go. And the Indian chief asks, asks Christian Bale if he could take the chains off his hands so that he can help fight. Christian doesn't, Christian doesn't uh, trust him yet. And uh, the story goes on from there. And, and gradually, but you know, little by little, 
a relationship builds up between Christian and his and the Indian chief and some respect, mutual respect for one another. And they have various skirmishes along the way. And for Christians, you know, one thing I noticed was that they do have a, they do talk about God. They they read the Bible even in this movie. The woman who's, who lost her family is a, a person of faith. And so she wants, uh, and she talks to Christian about God and asks him if he believes in God. And he says, yes, I do, but I think he's forgotten us out here. She, she replies that, you know, God is still with us. Sometimes he gives us tests or something like that. So, I mean, uh, these kind of Hollywood movies that are not, that are not so-called Christian movies, they do a good job and just kind of a little bit, little bit putting the Bible and faith in there without making it a so-called Christian movie. And uh, at the very end of the movie, uh, as Christian is, they made it to the back to the fort to their to the, the uh, destination fort not to the fort they started out from but he was um, so he was going to leave and the Indians were leaving and uh, Christian Bale says uh, to the boy the, the kid, the kid Indian I want you to have this pulls out his Bible, hands it to him, and that's the, that's like the final scene of the movie, so I would be even, I'd call this a Christian movie, even, well, it's not billed as such, it's not like it, it's not like that there be light, you know, or uh, God's not dead, not those type of Christian movies, but it's, it just kind of gives you a little subtle aspect of faith. Which is true to life. I mean, a lot of people do believe in God and read the Bible a little bit, but they don't know that much about it. They're just lay people who, who just have a quiet faith. They're not even evangelists, especially back then. But, well, the lady may have been an evangelist. And so uh, that's not something to keep in mind. A lot of people I know... Uh, that I run into who aren't pastors or evangelists, and they haven't gone to seminary and all that. But they do believe, they do go to church, and they quietly have faith. And, and, and in their own little quiet ways, they they tell the good news. They evangelize. As this woman who lost her family, she did. She clung to the only thing that was left, was, was her faith in God. And that's something to, something to learn from, you know, because we're all going to face some tragedy someday. Well, maybe not. Some people live a, a blessed life from womb to tomb, you know. And I'm not sure that's not necessarily because God is rewarding anybody, but it's just that, you know, that's the, that's the way free will happens. For some, you know, there's tough times. For others, not. And I'm not even say I'm not even sure those who live the so-called, you know, golden life, blessed life, that that's so much better because sometimes it's the tests, the trials and tribulations that really uh, help us to grow in faith. Like this lady who lost her family. But I'm not saying you should go out and look for trouble, but I'm saying if you're living a very comfortable Christian life then you might want to stretch your boundaries a little bit so that you're finding something new to challenge you and, and to make you uh, stretch more test your uh, test your metal so to speak and uh, historically and, and even in, you know one thing that bothers me is that I was thinking during this movie is that Today, in 2018, we have all these, we have various minority groups who come together for, to, 
to fight for their rights and to fight for better treatment for themselves. But, like, you know, like the black group, African American, or the uh, Latinos, or, or uh, other groups. And, uh, but you rarely see these same, these, these uh, special, so called special interest groups fighting for others. You don't see like African Americans fighting for the rights of Latinos. They stick to mostly just fighting for their, right, their own rights. Who's the only group that ever stands up for others? It's the whites standing up for other groups. And, and who stands up for the Indians? The Native Americans. Do you see any African Americans ever speaking? Oh, they have not been treated right. They don't do that. So I think we should think about that too, as far as people standing up for others, not just themselves. Take a stand for other groups. If you're, even if you're in a special interest minority group yourself, you can still take a stand for others, and you can take a stand for whites. If you're black and you see something injust happening to white people, take a stand for them. For us, I'm white. I don't think of myself as white, but uh, you know, that's that's the category I'm dumped into if we must have a category. So that's the thing to think about and pray for. Hear my prayer, Lord, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.